Good day. All right, I admit I'm not really walking upside down on the ceiling, but why can't I when flies can? That is the question I'm tackling this week. I brought the Science Shack to Magna, the Science Adventure Centre near Rotherham, because to answer this question, I'm going to need a lot of space. And space is one thing they've got masses of at this wonderful, award-winning building. So why don't you come and have a look at my upside-down laboratory? In the lab, we've built an experimental ceiling five metres up. When it comes to walking on the ceiling, flies have nature on their side, but humans have technology. So we're taking a strong attack. The Science Shack team, Jem, Chris and Jonathan, are going to investigate the physics and engineering by attempting to get people actually walking on the ceiling in ways that have never been done before. And I'm going to look at the flies. We're going we're gonna to build all sorts of gadgets to try and walk upside down on the ceiling, but the question really is, what sort of gadgets do these chaps use? Well, one man I hope is going to help us is Dr. Howell Jones here from Sheffield Hallam University. Right. What are you going to do? Well, we're going to be able to put these guys in the electron microscope and look at their feet really close up at about 1,000, 6,000 times. 6,000 times, right. so you can really look at the feet. We'll be really be able to see all the details on these guys' feet. That's fantastic. And you'll send the results back later. We will, yes. Thanks very much. Okay. Good luck. Well, I hope that he will give us some sort of clue as to what all these chaps are doing hanging onto the ceiling there. Now we've scoured the country for people who actually know about walking upside down and have tried it and in the end we wound up in an Australian bar in Sheffield and this is what we found. Right, this is Alan, Amy, Will and Sarah, is that right? Yep. And you are actually Australian? Yep. Right, so she knows all about walking upside down. <laughs> anyway, are you prepared to go up there and hang by your toenails? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Are you scared? No. Well, I would be. Anyway, before we send you up there, we've got to get you checked out medically, make sure your blood pressure's not too bad. So if you go and see the nurse, that would be great. Now, this business of getting checked medically is important because we human beings are designed to work with our feet at the bottom. We've got valves in the veins in our legs so that our feet don't fill up with blood. The trouble is, if we're upside down, they don't work. And actually, all the blood does literally rush to the head. And being a sensitive soul, I couldn't take that. So we have to make sure that their blood pressure is all all right. If they pass the medical, the volunteers will attempt to walk the five-metre course, each using one of the devices the team is struggling to build. There are only two rules. First, each human fly has to be self-contained. If you want a vacuum cleaner, you've got to carry it with you. You can have a mains lead, but that's all. And the second rule is that nobody is allowed to fall off and make dents in this concrete. So we've got safety guys up there with white helmets who are going to make sure that everyone is carefully roped and cannot plunge to the ground. The first technology we're trying is Velcro, the stuff you use to do up your anorak. Uh, you do have an anorak, don't you? The design Chris is using for the boots is based on experiment. Now, if I just push it up like that, it won't stick very well. I can pull it off easily. But if I put it on with a good deal of welly, like this, then with luck it might just about hold my weight. Now, let's try. I'm taking my feet up. Nah, not quite, but close. So I reckon if I had twice this area, it might perhaps hold my weight. Clearly, one challenge is actually getting our volunteers onto the ceiling in the first place. I wondered if I could get some inspiration from how flies do it. But surprisingly, no one could tell me. So I went to Oxford Scientific Films to meet James Reardon to see if he could provide evidence for how flies land on the ceiling. So how are you going to crack this impossible problem? Right, well, we, we're going to use this cunning stuff, Fluon. Fluon? That's the, like, non-stick frying pans? So. Yeah, basically. Um, and we can, we can, the only area that we won't, we won't cover in Fluon will be a small area on the ceiling of our enclosure. Do you think there's any chance we'll actually get one on film? Pretty slim, but we'll give it a go. OK, let's go for it. James drops the flies. They're not dead, they're, they're just asleep. Into the non-stick tank, and then moves the camera into place. He's shooting film 
ten times faster than normal to slow down the motion of the flies. But we won't know if we've got anything until the film is developed. For the moment, the only picture we have is from a small video camera. But it doesn't matter because the flies just aren't cooperating. You can probably see more of the ceiling on the monitor than I can okay. see through the camera, so... Well, they don't appear to be getting near it yet. You're not seeing anything yet. Just on the edge of my frame. Oh. I can see flies landing on the ceiling, but I can't quite see how they're getting there. It appears to be blundering into it, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, oh! Ah! Yeah, so unfortunately in the corner of my frame. Yes, it was right in the middle of this. And as you can see, there's a huge amount of pot luck in this. I mean, uh, you yes. have to run the camera hoping when it will land. Oh. It landed right in my shot. Yeah, right, so if you've been running. running. <laughs> Frustrating, isn't it? <laughs> With time ticking away and still no decent pictures, James has a cunning idea. Honey. Like that? That's it. Oh, decent honey, too. And it seems to be working. Yeah! Hey, that was smack in frame, wasn't it? He was a little bit low in frame, oh, unfortunately. Look. Yeah, look! It's, it must be right in your field of view, surely. So you can't tell, can we, till we get the film back? But Unfortunately not. OK, fingers crossed. It does look absolutely smack in the middle. So let's hope for the best. So, Jamie Ritten, these are the answer, yes? They're certainly an answer. These boots are made for walking on the ceiling? Mm. Well, we hope so, yeah. Oh, they're tight, aren't they? Yeah, they need to be. It's a design feature. And they're firmly bolted down to these bits of wood, yeah? Six bolts through each sole, glued and screwed down there. OK. They don't shift. And I can't lift them off, so presumably that's what these levers are for? Yeah, these levers here give right. a massive leverage on this kind of cam action here. OK. And that'll lift the back up, and then you roll with it and take your foot forwards. I see. Totally releases it. So then I move forward and stamp down. Yeah. yeah. And so if you stamp, stamp in, give it a bit of that to sort of lock the hook. A little bit of forward. Yeah. Okay. That's like the that. one. <sighs> well, the question is, will they work upside down? Right, the great moment has come, time for the first walk, and the person who's going to do it is Amy. Good luck. Thank you. I think, I think you're fantastically brave. You've got, got the Velcro shoes on. Mm -hmm. What chance do you think they're going to give you? I'm fairly good. I'm fairly good. You're confident? I'm feeling pretty confident. It's just going to be the weight factor for it. I'll give it a good try. And just tell me your age. How old are you? I'm 19. Until? I'm 20 tomorrow. 20 tomorrow. Last well, week. go on. <laughs> Last day as a teenager, walk upside down. Go for it. Hey, she's taking two little steps. She has. <laughs> what she's trying to do is just hang upside down without really walking, stamping her feet in with help from these two chaps, the right and then just hang up. there. But it's very, so very difficult to stamp <laughs> upwards. That's the problem. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, sorry. <laughs> what did that feel like? Amazing. <laughs> when I actually finally got the confidence just to let go of the ropes and was just hanging for a little bit. Now, on the ground, I had to have the levers in order to get my feet off because they were so firmly stuck. But it's quite obvious with Amy upside down that it's extremely difficult to stamp your feet hard enough in to get thoroughly stuck. So we reckon she doesn't need these levers, which are actually just getting in the way and making life more complicated. Are you ready? I am. Go for it. Feet up. On to me. That was a good stamp. Hey! <laughs> She's hanging upside down! <laughs> that is fant oh, <laughs> fantastic! For a good five seconds. Now, just make it last a little bit longer. The giggles. Hang, hang, hang. It's Velcro Woman. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, boy, take the step. But it's just too difficult, isn't it? Sorry, I don't. <laughs> okay, so, what do you think? I think that could very easily work. Right. Yeah, it felt that felt so much more comfortable. Did it? Than before. You were hanging there, Less weren't you? Weight, yeah. You were actually hanging by your feet. I felt like when I took a, a step, my body wasn't going to move with me. Right. So, it, if, you know, you walk on 
gravity but do the normal way. <laughs> yes. You can, your body kind of follows you. Yes. I felt when I was hanging that I was going to go, go onto a diagonal and wasn't going to follow anybody. Oh, interesting. I don't know why that was, but I did feel that way. So you mean it's partly to do action with gravity and it's partly psychology that you don't know what's when you're upside, upside down? Definitely. Right. OK, Definitely. well, that's absolutely, thank you, very, thank you very much indeed. We'll credit you with one step. Right. <laughs> but I don't think we can really credit you with walking on the street. Anyway, thank you very much thank indeed. Much. Brilliant. Now, lots of people must have seen flies landing on the ceiling. But I wonder if anyone's got sharp enough eyes to see exactly how they do it. I want to try some of these intelligent people waiting to go in magna, hands-on, science adventure centre. Now, excuse me, have you ever seen a fly on the ceiling like that? Yes, I have. How do you think they get no there? No idea. No idea. I think I do. Go on then, how climb do you think? Climb up the walls. You think they climb up the walls and then across the ceiling? Well, we'll soon find out. Thanks very much. Have you oh, seen flies thanks. on the ceiling? Have you? Do you know how they get there? Suction pads and feet. Ah! What do you think, madam? I think they fly and land upside down. Right, OK, so how do they do it? How do they, where well, do they, they turn up? They do up? a bit of a flip as they approach. Go on then, show me. <laughs> Go on then. Right, is it fly dynamics. Ah, oh, that's dead cunning. So they sort of swerve over in mid-air. I think so. Well, yeah. that's a fascinating theory. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. What do you think? I think they climb up the wall. You think they climb up the wall? What do you think? You think they climb up the wall? Definitely. Climb, climb up, up the wall, wall. Yeah. right. Fly upside they down. climb up. Go on then. Like that. The front legs stick up. Oh, hold on a sec. Show me that again. They climb up. They yep. fly up like that. Fly up. And the front legs stick up. And then stick up. The front legs stick up first. So when yes. they're flying, you mean? Yes. The front legs go up first. Yes. And what they do is flat back flip. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> Why do you think that? Have you seen them do it? No. I've seen crane flies do it. Really? Really? Yes. That's really interesting. Brilliant. Well, we've got some fabulous theories there, but let's see what they really do. And here we are. This is the film back from the lab. And with luck, we'll see for the very first time on telly, flies landing upside down on the ceiling. When they did start flying, mostly they just blundered about. But then finally, they began to get some landings. But even slowed down 10 times, it's difficult to see exactly what happens. But if we sound the slow motion even more to about 1 30th of normal speed, you can begin to see what's going on. This one looks like it crashes into the ceiling, front legs first, and then flips itself upside down. Here's another. It misses the first time and then manages to catch with its front legs. See it raise the legs above its head? And it looks like they all do the same thing, front legs first, then flip up so they end up facing back the way they came. This must be the clearest one. This fly flies below the ceiling, raises its front legs up, catches the ceiling and flips. Here it is again, blown up and slowed right down. It's a simple, elegant action. Of course, they aren't all so elegant. This one seems to have got its head stuck in the honey. So there, so there it is, a mystery conclusively solved. The fly lands on the ceiling by landing with its front feet first and then turning over and flipping up so it winds up facing the way it came from. Now, the next thing we're trying is suction boots. This is one of those industrial suction pads which is used for holding up large sheets of glass and things like that. And we fix that onto the bottom of the boot and the tube comes up here and you pump it out. Is this right, Jim? You pump it out like that. Yeah, and, and when that clicks, you know you've got full suction and you've got about 200 kilos holding you on there. 200 kilos? Yeah. And then you just press the red thing and, and you drop like a stone. Uh, there's a bit of a delay. Is that? But, uh, yeah. And the air leaks back in again. So, these ought to be fantastically efficient because they are industrially used and 200 kilos is absolutely massive. That's enough to hold me. So it feels pretty good to me, although it's jolly heavy, I have to say. It's been a while since I heard from Howell and the flies under the microscope. Hi, Howell, how have you got on? It's going very well. We've um, prepared the flies, coated them in platinum, put them in the electron microscope, and I'm currently looking at a picture of a fly's foot. What does it look like? It looks incredible. It's covered in spiky hairs, there are two large claws, and most importantly, I think, there are two pads covered in tiny hairs. So it's got both claws and hairs on its foot? That's right. So this seems to be why it can cling to the ceiling. It's got so many of those tiny hairs, it just uses those to cling onto the ceiling. 
Okay, so you, you think if, there, if it's a lumpy ceiling, then it'll cling on with claws? It seems to be the case, yes. And if it's a smooth ceiling, then it's going to stick on with its hairs? And for windows as well, of course, it can use these tiny hairs and I think maybe some sticky substances to um, cling to the surfaces. That is absolutely amazing. Well, I can't wait to see the pictures. Many thanks indeed. Right, power to your elbow. It won't, it won't yeah. ride up. Yeah, because that'll be her. OK, we're ready for the second attempt. And this is Alan, genuine Australian, yep. with Satsias. Um, but don't wouldn't say anything about you being a sucker up there. there. But what do, you <laughs> think, what do you think your chances are? I think they're quite good. Um, I'm pretty sure they'll hold my weight. It's just a matter of getting one foot in front of the other. <laughs> Sounds easy, doesn't it? And you have tried with them on the ground. You know how they work. Yeah. Right. Got a solid so, thing. shall we get you up there? Yeah, let's give it a go. Good luck. Thanks. Right, and now, are you ready? Wait off. Alan, good luck. Get them stuck up there. So now you have to pump them out, yes? You've got your hands free. So both feet. Both feet. Slack off the ropes. Holy. Slack off the ropes. <laughs> He's hanging there. He's hanging by his sucking boots. Right, that is brilliant. Now, can you release one? Yes! Yeah. Practically knocked us out black hair on the platform. Right, one foot in front of the other. Yeah. And take... <laughs> pump the air out again. And then air out of the other one. There it goes, yes! He's taking a step, taking the second step. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> You've got to put it in front of the other. <laughs> I need to get over here somehow. That's it. That's it. Yeah! <laughs> That's it. Yes, 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 you're on, yes. Oh, fantastic. That was one, you can count them, look. One, two, three, four steps. That is a fantastic trip. Well done. Brilliant. Oh, uh, yeah, I just couldn't move my body with my feet. And so, okay, so you lose caution. Yeah, it was very much the, the top half of my body couldn't follow. Because there's no forward movement in there at all. Right. But it clearly worked. Oh, yeah, that yeah. is fantastic. You've gone, well, more than a metre. <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely amazing. A terrific achievement. He took, you know, three or four clear steps. Obviously, it's very difficult. There's a combination of gravity and psychology working against you. <laughs> there we go. It doesn't know which way is up anymore. <laughs> Now, let me try and show you how I think those hairy, wet feet work for the fly. Here is a model fly. Isn't he wonderful? Absolutely terrific. And he's got feet made of darning wool, so they're pretty hairy. And here I've got some water, and I'm going to secrete some water to wet those feet, just like the uh, pads on the fly's feet do. OK, so it's got wet feet attached to that glass. If my theory is right, I should be able to turn him over so that he's actually standing on the ceiling. Let's see. Yeah, look, look, he's walking upside down. Fantastic. It must be the surface tension in the water. Now, the question is, can we do it with a vacuum cleaner? I've got here a very powerful vacuum cleaner. Switch it on. Wah! Practice sucked me into it. But if I put this up against the ceiling, you'll see it's not actually powerful enough to take its own weight. However, let me show you a cunning trick. I've got here a piece of plastic, it's just a sandwich box. If I stick that nozzle in there, so I'm not increasing the, the flow or the suction, it's the same vacuum cleaner. Look at that. It's practically lifting the weight of the vacuum cleaner. Amazing. All I've done is to increase the surface area so there's more of the atmosphere pushing up on the bottom and holding that against the ceiling. Oh, I can't get it off. 
Now, let me show you something even more remarkable. What I've got here is, I need your help, chaps, is a big chunk of wood with a, a hole cut so I can shove that nozzle in there. Now, can, I sh can you show us the back? We've got a soft rubber skirt all the way around and wheels. You see there's some polystyrene, polyurethane wheels here. Okay, could you hold it up, chaps, against the ceiling? It takes two chaps to hold it, but when I switch on the vacuum cleaner, it takes its own weight. Fantastic. Now, what's more, show you the show you the trick of the century. Go on, then, Chris. Try it. One, two, three. Look, it's holding its weight and rolling around on the ceiling. That is absolutely fantastic. Okay, come down again. Switch off. Just show the snow trick. Have to let the air back in. And there it comes away. Isn't that fantastic? What a wonderful thing. So really, there is a possibility of a vacuum cleaner holding somebody up against the ceiling. That's better. Now we have the vacuum cleaner powered surfboard or sledge. And this is Will who's going to drive it. Are you confident? I am, yeah. Right, uh, you're going to stick your feet in there, and then what you're going to do is... I'm, I'm going to use ski poles to push ski myself Ski poles, across. very cunning, OK. Hang on, just my arm. All right, over the edge. Well, good luck. And I put my leg around, around the top of the road. Got one foot in. The other foot, it's got to come back this way a bit. That's it. You're in. Right, ski pole. One ski pole. The other ski pole. OK, off you go. Push on the nuts. That's it. Here we are. There. Yes, he's going. He's skating across the ceiling. Fantastic. and he's done about three metres, I reckon. That's absolutely brilliant. How did it feel? It was a bit strange trying to push myself along. Was it? But yeah. Was it a, a strain, uncomfortable being upside down? No, no, it was all right. I think it was that victory roll you did in the middle, probably, was, did, was your undoing. <laughs> anyway, fantastic. You're easily the winner so far. Thank you. With only one to go. You might think all this ceiling walking technology is just for fun, but that's an idea that would drive some people up the wall. I've come here to the bowels of Magna to see an amazing bit of wall climbing technology. Just look at this fabulous robot. It's specifically built to inspect nuclear power stations. About every three years they have an MOT and this thing crawls all over the outside making sure that everything's ship shape and Bristol fashion. Now it's held on by magnets. If you could just stop it for a second. I can't pull it off the wall. Eight wheels, each one with magnets embedded in them and it's got all these lights on it, and also TV. So, so if I stand here, I can be on telly. Hello, Mother. So they can drive all over the outside of this radioactive power station and make sure that everything's in shape. Wonderful, wonderful machine. They really are going up the wall. I still need your questions and your help for science check programmes later in the series. To see how you can get involved, visit the Science Chat website. While we've been recording today, we've had an email from Dan Crichton, who suggests it would be easy to walk on the ceiling if you just drilled a lot of holes in the ceiling, put a vacuum cleaner above, and then you could stand anywhere underneath and your feet would be sucked up against it, like those air hockey tables where you blow air up from below and the puck slides around without friction. There's a slight problem, though. If you've got a vacuum and lots and lots of holes, then it doesn't matter where you put your feet. There's going to be loads of holes for the air to rush in and kill the vacuum. No vacuum, no adhesion. Splat. Sorry, Dan. Now, the next thing is magnetism. I've got here a couple of magnets, but they're electromagnets, so before I switch them on, 
they don't grip at all. Now, here's my battery pack here. I'll switch them on like that. Oh. Like that. And now, that's pretty well hung. And the question is, can I hang from it? Yes, look, my feet, they're off the ground. Wow, ah, fantastic. Great. But oh, I've got to unswitch it again before I take it off. But we've discovered something really quite extraordinary while we were making this program, because we started off testing them on this. This is a box section of steel, and now if I switch on again, you'll see that the magnet sticks all right onto that, but it's not, it's not nearly strong enough. And that's because here we've got only three millimeters of steel, and here we've got three millimeters plus a six millimeter sheet, nine altogether. So you've got to have enough steel for the magnet to give you a proper grip. Now, our final contestant, Sarah, mm -hmm. with the magnetic boots. Yes. Right, are you confident? Sort of. Let's see your boots. <laughs> right, two great big electromagnets. Well, they're certainly going to take your weight. You're, you're tiny, aren't no, you? I'm scared that I'm too weak to hold them up. <laughs> ah, you're a climber. <laughs> Sorry. You climb mountains, don't you? Sometimes. Well, this is a doddle then. You're walking on the level here. No, I climb mountains face up. Not face down. Oh, I see. <laughs> right, now, you worked out the buttons. Uh, red for left, green for right. Right, and that releases them. Yes. So don't press both buttons at the same time. <laughs> okay. Interestingly, our Australians get onto the ceiling by gripping with our front limbs and doing a backflip, just like the flies. <laughs> and just hang about for a bit. <laughs> OK. OK, are you ready? Yeah. Then don't keep us in suspense. One foot off. Good. Great. That's terrific. Next foot. Well done. Brilliant. You're away. Yes. Well done. How does it feel? Um, it's quite strenuous, actually. Yeah, I bet it is. <laughs> They're very heavy, aren't they? They are quite heavy. Do you know where to put your feet? Um. Yeah, one foot in front of the other. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yes! I think the magnets are failing. That's it. Well done. Well done. Release your magnets, both, <laughs> and swing up the right way. You've been two minutes upside down. Oh, well, I've had more than that. that. That's long enough. Too much blood in the head. Oh, what that a was shame. absolutely brilliant. You were virtually there. I know. The winner. How did it feel? It's really cool once you get the hang of it. Right. But you have to pull yourself up to get your feet back on. Well, maybe that's being a climber. Maybe you're used to being at the wrong angle. Because <laughs> you're definitely the winner. That's absolutely no doubt about cool. it. You've gone further than anyone else. Yay. And you would have. That's fantastic. <laughs> When we started today, I didn't know what was possible, but now I know people can just walk on the ceiling. What you need is a bit of technology and brilliant ideas. If you have a science question you'd like answered, a team of experts from the Open University is standing by. All you have to do is visit the Science Chat website at www.bbc.co.uk slash science slash science shack.